Hey everyone, I'm Sophia with Awaken Catholic, and this is Awaken the Saint. Have you ever stopped to listen to the names that are proclaimed during Mass at the Liturgy of the Eucharist? Father begins to name drop the Blessed Virgin Mother, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Twelve Apostles. Then he lists the names of some saints at each Mass, one of those names including Saint Sixtus. Without having much knowledge of his upbringing, we can only focus on the last year of his life, being by far the year that definitely confirmed his sainthood. What is it that made his small witness so great that the church celebrates him at every Mass? Maybe because his last act on this side of earth was celebrating Mass himself. Sixtus, a convert to the faith and philosopher by trade, was elected Pope in 256 and took the name after his predecessor Sixtus, the sixth Pope of the church. He became Pope in yet another dark moment in church history and dealt with both internal and external persecutions and division. During the reign of Emperor Decius in 250 to 251, all Roman citizens were required to offer a sacrifice to the gods when they were in the presence of an officer. Not sacrificing meant cruel punishment and usually in death. Because so many Christians were fearful for their lives, they began offering sacrifices to gods they knew didn't exist, even if it meant sparing their lives from the tyranny. Many churches in Africa and Asia were outraged by this cowardice and began teaching that Christians who gave in to these sacrifices should have to be rebaptized. After all, they declared through their actions that they no longer believed in God, but in man alone. When Pope Sixtus II rose to papal power, he was able to reconcile with the African and Asian churches on a diplomatic level. However, the theological reconciliation wouldn't happen until St. Augustine's time, 150 years later. Baptism is only something that a Christian can obtain once, but repentance is obtainable for anyone who desires a mended relationship with God. It wasn't long after his consecration as Pope that a declaration went out from the one once peaceful emperor of Valerian stating that Christians could no longer gather in cemeteries. Then he took it one step further, declaring that any bishop, deacon, or priest could be put to death on the spot without a trial. No warning, just instant death. A group of soldiers found Pope Sixtus II celebrating Mass in the catacombs on the eve of August 6th and beheaded the Pope without hesitation. Six deacons were also killed along with him. They were laid to rest in the catacombs where they fell, happy to lay down their lives for the church. There were many opportunities for St. Sixtus II to throw in the towel and conform to the chaos that was happening around him, both in and to the church. But he didn't, and he sets way for what each of us are called to do. We aren't made for this world, and it's important to call on the strength of the martyrs to remind ourselves of that daily. May we too not become bystanders in the world today, but an example of the greater glory. Pope St. Sixtus II, pray for us.